I remember when I first got into the industry. I remember walking into Urban Brew for the very first time. I got there and I didn't really understand the industry. I didn't have any expectations. I didn't even know what was going to happen three months, four months, five months from my first day on the job. I just knew that this was something I really wanted, something I was really excited about, and I'm going to give it my all. But one of the things that I think made my journey really unique is that when I came in, the notion of celebrity wasn't important to me. Um, being famous wasn't important to me. What was important to me was really learning. We've heard two very different stories, but one of the things that's very similar to my story is that everyone was willing to get their hands dirty and work. And when I first got to Urban Brew, I mean, Caesar was my co-presenter, but I would carry his bags. I worked Monday to, Monday to Friday, nine to five, as an intern, Gingaholi, I never got a cent when I worked there. And I learned everything from, from language count, counting how much Zulu was in one sentence, counting how much, um, how much screen time each person gets, deciding who's going to be on air or not. Um, everything from conceptualizing a show to booking the artist to actually running around and getting them their tea. Do you know what I mean? I did absolutely everything because it was important for me, Lloyd, to understand the business. I was excited to be in a place where I was like, here's a world of knowledge and what I want to do is learn. And I feel like one of the reasons why my celebrity yeah. is the way that it is, is because I was willing to get my hands dirty. I worked really, really hard in making sure that I did everything that I could to keep me in the space that I loved so much. And I knew that that everything needed me to not look at the celebrity and not look at the hype yeah. and concentrate on the real work and concentrate on what it is that's going to give me longevity. I draw my inspiration from my family. I draw my inspiration from my drive, which sounds really weird, but I, I'm a big dreamer. Um, I have crazy dreams, and once I've achieved one, I'm setting another one that's even crazier. Um, and that inspires me. I'm inspired to be better every day. There's two things that struck, struck me immediately as you were talking about your family. One, um, in modern society, especially amongst black families, it's rare that you have a strong father figure. Sure. It's, it's unfortunate, it's, it's, it's actually quite sad, but it, it is a reality. Um, you've been fortunate enough to be in that situation. And what I love when you speak about your parents, and you can hear it like literally resonate through everything that you do, is that it's through the teaching of your, teachings of your parents. What are three things that you've learned from your mom? And what are three things that you've learned from your dad? Wow. Um, I don't know if I can go three, but I can just do a generic. Yeah. So when it comes to my father, I learned, I learned how to be strong. I learned how to be independent. And I learned never to take no when you know that this is your yes. But I also learned from my father, I learned when it's time to walk away. Um, and it's probably one of my biggest life lessons. And if you look at my career and my journey, one of the reasons why I've, I've managed to do as well as I have is because I always knew when to leave. My mother taught me how to be an upstanding woman in society. And when I say upstanding woman, I mean there were points where my mother was the breadwinner in my family. And one thing that she never compromised on was the respect that we had to have for my father, even though tides had changed. There's that essence in being true woman, yeah. of being warm and nurturing. And those nurturing traits, I feel like in the plight of women, we're starting to ignore. And that makes me really, really sad because there's no, there's no book that says in order to be better than a man, we need to be a man and forget about all the things that make us women. Can you please do it in red lipstick? Can you please do it in a pair of heels? And can we be nurturers and warm and beautiful and be loved and love and also kick ass in the boardroom? Yep. 
Do you know what I mean? It's one of the things about women is that we need more examples of women who are holistic examples of success versus just the corporate giants. I think financial um, intelligence is something we still lack as a community, as a black community. And I look at institutions, financial institutions, to, to go out into communities and really, really stress the importance of saving. There's nothing worse than knowing that someone has a really great job and they've got fancy cars and live in great houses, but if you ask them if they have a savings, Chances are they don't. I look forward to, to being part of platforms like this where we can start teaching people through our mistakes um, how to, to live better um, financially. There's no one-on-one -on -one course for money management, financial management. We see a lot of our brothers and sisters who are in the entertainment industry. At one point, they are making a lot of money. At the next point, they are completely broke. Yep. How do you navigate through the money matters? How do you do that? A couple of tips. Sure. So when I first got into the business, um, my first endorsement deal I got at the age of 20. I made my first million before the age of 21. When I say to you, I do not know what I did with that money, Lloyd, I'm not even joking with you. I, I can't even tell you an expensive bag that I bought. I can't tell you... Did I put an investment or a down payment in an apartment? No, I just went out with my friends and I blew it. All of it. The reason why I'm bringing this up is because I, I literally had no direction. I, I was still at that point where I was young, I was excited about the industry. Um, I knew I loved what I did, but I didn't really have a plan. What I would do is I'd ask you, what is your wildest dream? Because I do believe that if you've worked hard for something, you need to reward yourself. But then after that, I'll tell you with, with what's left, what can you do to get out of any financial debt that you may be in? And how can you look at using that money that's there to grow it? Because you've got that 1 million rand or 2 million rand right now, but how can you turn that into a 4 million rand, 5 million rand a couple of years down the line? Simply, I would say invest in property. Any that, that would be the easiest financial advice I would give you. But the best financial advice I'd give you is to say, get a financial advisor, sit with them and find out what are the best avenues for you at your age, the best financial avenues that for you and the amount of money that you have to go out there and make sure that that money doesn't just disappear once, you, once you've gotten it, but you're actually able to flip it and grow it. It took that life lesson for me to realize that actually, why are you here? What is it that you want to achieve? And what are the things that you need to do to achieve those things? So my first goal was making sure that after I'd blown that money, was how am I going to get that money back, right? And the only way I was going to get that money back was by changing what people had decided I was going to be in this business. And that took a lot of sacrifices. Yeah. So I needed to change the way that brands and societies looked at me in order to attract that corporate sponsorship that was going to get me that money back that I blew. And I did that. Once I got to a point where my bra the face of my brand started changing, I then started actively deciding where I was going to work and what I was going to do in order to make sure that this is my lane and it's my lane only. Any success story that you've ever heard of is someone, yes, had a passion, yes, someone had a dream, but someone saw a gap in the market. You know, when I came in, I was the cute, pretty girl. Yeah. There's always the cute, pretty girl, and she comes in almost every year, and she's there, but she disappears. Mm -hmm. And she disappears because at the time that she was hot, she doesn't find her niche. She ends up being the sequel instead of the blockbuster movie. Sure. There's something that my dad says to me um, and used to say to me when I was growing up and it's, it stuck with me. He always says, my girl, be better today than you were yesterday and be better tomorrow than you are today. Um, that's how I choose to live my life. And even if I'm better because today I ate better than I ate yesterday, I'm better today than I was yesterday. And, and those are the fundamental teachings um, that I feel people need to live by is if you're just trying to be better, just that extra step or just that little step, 
you're eventually going to be better holistically. One of the things that I loved about today more especially was the conversation moved in so many different directions and I felt like even though today's speakers were all people in the entertainment industry, it was people in the, in the entertainment industry in different aspects. And then all of those individuals in their own rights are people that have gone and created their own platforms and their own businesses. And I just found that the conversation steered towards a space where whether you're in the industry or not, you could still draw and find inspiration from. And I think these platforms are really important based on that. You know, there's so much information out there and we just need the platforms to be able to discuss them and to be able to teach each other what's out there. Um, we learn through experiences, we learn through people's mistakes and we learn through people's success. And I think that's exactly what the Live Better Talks are all about. To equip them with the tools that they need so that when they encounter trials and tribulations, because we've made those mistakes and we've let them know what those mistakes are, they themselves don't need to go through them. And I hear now when you're sharing your story about how every little piece of production, when you, you wanted to get involved in it because you wanted to learn, getting your hands dirty as someone who wants to reach a level of affirmation, a level of accomplishment, how important is that for you, like to get your hands dirty? You know, getting your hands dirty, I think, is the most important part. I mean, one of my favorite things that um, DJ Spoo just men mentioned in his speech was when he was talking about the fact that you go into a space, right? Yeah. And you've got to love it. And you've got to love what you do. Yeah. But you've also got to humble yourself. You've got to realize that there's, there's a journey that, this, that, that it takes. Yeah. You know, you, you can't, you're not just going to get there and be this overnight success and everything's going to line up and be perfect. It takes a lot of hard work. Yeah. And more than the hard work, I think the most difficult task in any journey is to humble yourself. Yeah. It's to realize that in you know who you are and you look in the mirror and you say I'm great, like he was saying, but you can't go out there and be obnoxious about it and be overbearing and be this person that people don't want to gravitate towards. You've got to humble yourself yeah. and you've got to bring yourself towards yourself. That doesn't mean playing yourself down yes. by any means. What it means is that you need to understand who you are in a space, understand who the person that you're speaking to is and try draw out that knowledge and that wisdom that you can get from that person. <laughs>